Good evening. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick video comment um, for some people, a girl in one of the groups that I participate, but I'm probably going to end up uh, posting it on my on my wall, so I'll con I will contextualize it uh, so you you can sort of see what why I'm making it or however you need to contextualize it. Um, this is uh, basically for uh, a girl named Sana. I never, we haven't met personally. She's uh, a member at the a group. Uh, resistance to gay as a culture, way of life, or marriage, or so society element. Um, basically, it's a group that it fights back the the gay movement about for installing uh, homosexuality as a permanent element of society and culture and marriage. Right. Um, you know, this has happened to me before where I I see a title like for example North North America um, North North America revert re, reparative or restorative something uh, treatment you know these are groups that attempt to um, well I was under the impression that they are secular because they sound secular and it's happened to me already like three or four times where I enter these groups and as soon as I start talking, posting, participating, um, you know, I, it, it, be, it really is populated by uh, religious, um, some call it fanaticism or euphoric uh, sentiments against homosexuality and, you know, insulting, gays are all this, perverted, blah, 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 blah. So, or, you know, or to do with God, you know, you, uh, it's a sin and you can't, you won't be saved and Jesus, uh, this and that, right? So I'm always really disappointed because I, um, I, it's, it's happened to me three or four times. I'm, I feel misled by the titles of these groups. Some of you know my, uh, my theorem, um, basically it's I have been developing for several years uh, a scientific theorem um, with several areas of science involved involving several areas of science which does not condemn or um, malign homosexuality uh, but rather it aims at explaining why it happens to the species what it's about and opens the possibility of us owning it, being able to decide, you know, uh, how we want it or do we want it, or not if it's good or bad, but, you know, own it in the sense of one of our physiological uh, aspects of society. And it's always been very hard for me to, uh, you know, get across people because they either think that I'm endorsing it and then they, they, they can't hear me anymore um, and they think that I'm hiding my homosexuality or something. Uh, sometimes I, ca I catch the attention of people like Sa Sana because they, they see that somewhere they detect that I'm basically saying, you know, if, if you had a choice, um, I basically am of the belief that our optimal expression of uh, sexual life for any human being is to fulfill the design of our of nature of the way we were designed by creation evolution creation that creation I don't have a religious take on it I'm more of the school of uh, psychology you know that I know for a fact I mean I, I I don't really it's not an opinion I know for a fact from my own life and from seeing and learning uh, about people's lives and seeing how they grew up uh, that um, a huge part of uh, homose homosexuality is a development that has to do with something things that happened during childhood and um, and so there's 
my theorem is pretty broad, right? It speaks of different things. It speaks of society, social, social influences, of the sciences of psychology, of the sciences of, um, you know, baby development. Is, are there things that are happening in the environment? Uh, and also biologically and chemically, does the species have like a, a sort of a, a, a D demasculinizing uh, agent when a woman has, you know, there's lots of studies. I mean, it's been also seems to have been seen that um, sometimes if there are too many men and there's too much maleness in the family, you know, the, the younger children seem to get more ambiguous not you know there's different there's also talk about the hormones that are happening in the in, during gestation in the mother's well if the mother has anger issues like a lot anger basically anger towards men <laughs> um there um there seems to be some effects so, so there's scientifically it's very broad and then not to mention once we're born how our mom and our father get along and how that relationship treats the child, how the child is uh, treated by the mother, how the child is encouraged to bond, in the case of boys, bond with the father or not. Is the father able to bond or does the father shy away from a situation? It can't, um, it can't sort of dominate, it can't uh, rule his relationship with his boy, you know, he maybe becomes absent, he just loses interest, apathy, you know. Um, so there's all these aspects in psychology it's just really big it's huge and every time i make these videos they end up being like uh an hour and so i told sana that what i'll do this time is i'll just make short ones um and that way i can post them and we'll have something to talk about and then i'll make another one which has always been my idea if i ever did like a, a ted talk or something like that i always thought you know i should be prepared with lots of tangents and things because I could handle all of these tangents uh, uh, if if I'm calm, if I uh, kind of am already versed in possibilities of conversation or, or discourse, uh, I feel. But then, of course, uh, I've never actually had a conversation with people who are knowledgeable scientists and, you know, and so which leads me to um, all I've acquired is just learning, learning from the world, listening, uh, watching documentaries, listening to interviews and listening to children being interviewed or parents uh, and then all the various uh, doctors and psychologists that talk about it. And of course, what we've all been exposed to, the whole um, social fanaticism of civil rights or religion or uh, this, this sort of euphoria that has swept the western world you know, with uh you know to be or not to be gay it's all about letting people be gay and and so it's no longer um if there ever was an attempt at at maintaining it in the in the in the sciences of physiology it was crushed you know after the 70s and it became a civil issue a civil a matter of civil rights and of course uh, it's always been a religious uh subject so to, for some religions and not all the time, you know, it's uh, really, it is America, it's America that it has uh, such a, uh, so much religious vehemency regarding homosexuality. It's not so, such a huge thing in other, in religions in other countries of the world. But, okay, so just to lay down something to start on, I was thinking, you know, how interesting it is that, um, Homosexuality is nothing more than an expression of, of, of human sexuality. If you want to define what homosexuality is, if you want to explain to, uh, you know, uh, an, an alien who, who wants to learn about our, our, our body, our, our species, and what we're all about, how we function, you would say, you would have to say, yeah, homosexuality is something that can happen to human sexuality. In fact, it can happen to, to an animal that, that has um, 
a binary sexuality, which is the vast majority of, of, of life, <laughs> whether we're talking about trees or... Um, and um, so being a homosexuality, basically a, a scientific matter, it is. It's something, if you want to talk about it, discuss how it happens, what defines it, how it occurs, why it doesn't occur most of the time, uh, why is it seen as a phenomenal uh, occurrence, and, and, and what is the overall design of nature, and all these things, all these conversations, it is a scientific conversation. It's a medical, about the medical sciences, like psychology, sociology, um, and this being the case, it's very interesting to think about why then <laughs> has it been so um, obscure as a as a social conversation? Why has it been relegated to um, to religion, to faith, uh, and or 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 sort of not very present, kind of absent, silence and secretive, silenced and secretive, uh, and, and, and of, in which both are expressions of of uh, upset, of people becoming upset and angry and uh, hatefulness, uh, rejection, disgust, and secrecy, because the, the fascination and the, the, the attraction towards it also, has also walked with us throughout all of history. There, wherever you, whatever culture, whatever society, a long history, it, it, it is not something that, um, may be kept from occurring. It has always occurred and has always, when it has always occurred, when it has occurred, it has always uh, sort of been hushed and therefore, um, or, 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 or mankind culturally deals with it. It turn, gives it a comprehensive form, something like, um, you know, the North American Indians, I believe, um, or sometimes witch doctors or you know, just just to just to say anything, the Eskimos left them uh, watching the kids while they went hunting, or um, you know, and in, in Western in modern world, there are eccentric, creative people that are not the the typical majority. Um, you know, in the Greek, Roman, Persian, Indian, whatever times they were even part of society. Um, but they always had to be defined and contained. And so what we see is that mankind has always tried to, we can't get rid of it, <laughs> it always recurs. And there is some kind of, there's an instability about it. So it either, um, we either, before any instability or thing that we don't know, we want to explain it because we, our mind, the human intelligence cannot accept chaos or things that you, you can continue existing with something that you don't you can't explain we have to answer all questions and so because this is such a, a strong force in human beings and because there is something so contradictory and secretive and if, if, uh, um, um, I want to say ephemeris no um, Femoral. Well, anyway, it's something that is more of concept and of idea than anything that we've been handling and talking about socially with comfort. We have created instances of talking about it with comfort, like I said, but we had to sort of invent something. Something. It's like saying it's like mankind has always had to say what we have to do something with this. We can't just have it. We just can't hang them, throw them off the cliff, or. Or, or, or be secretive and, and have this, 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 this double standard happening. You know, we have to understand this. We have to see. But we never actually have. That's the whole thing. It's, we've never actually owned as a species uh, homosexuality in the sense that we've been able to explain why it happened scientifically, uh, anatomically, naturally, biologically, chemically. Uh, medically, we can't, we have never really said, well, you know, talked about it like it was our digestive system or our circulatory system or our sexual system, our sexuality system. We don't have a word in English for that. In Spanish, you do. You can say this, our sexual system, you know, how it all works. 
uh, we, we say sexuality in English. But in any case, we've never been able to talk about homosexuality with that comfort of owning it and know exactly what's up with it, why, why, what it's about, explain it, how it happens, how, they, how we do it, and, you know, everything. Uh, we have always had a very detached yet judgmental, very emotional, uh, and there's a reason. There's that can be explained. Why we have never been able to get close to it, in other words, is understandable. And I, I don't want to get into a very involved explanation right now. But what I want to um, sort of start off with is how interesting it is that it is absolutely a physiological matter, a physiological uh, that has been owned, that has been taken by religion, as, you know, you shall not steal, you, uh, you shall not, uh, you know, um, cheat, <laughs> you know, you should not uh, this, kill, and what have you, all the many instructions that religions have compassion, you know, um, if you're more uh, Asian religions, it's more about like not letting yourself uh, be um, uh, caught, and it's more psychological, you know, the, the, Hin the Hindu and the, the Buddhists are more about like detachment and um, de definition, not defining yourself by what you, you know, it's more uh, involved, more um, psychological and, and uh, this way, but it, in any case, even even um, Asian Oriental religions um, have also uh, had something to say about it, and usually it's not necessarily favorable. Religions um, in general have never um, embraced it, except in the West, we've decided that we have to have religions embrace it, and so we've created these new kind of evangelical type Christian religions that, uh, you know, that's reinvented basically. All of a sudden it's just like, you know, and get married, you know, <laughs> get married in the church with another man. <laughs> but traditionally, religions haven't really always been more the the political civil life that has either uh, sh put a wall up against it shunned it condemned it or had some kind of space for it some kind of uh, understanding social understanding for it to occur or to for for people to indulge in you know, whatever way however and whoever um, but you know what is interesting is that we have always, we have never been able to grab it. Like we can understand everything else about our body as well as we do so far, including our sexuality. Uh, we talk about sexuality like it's just another one of our physiological functions. When what starts making the, the 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 neurons fire and what chemicals start running when you get excited and what produces. Um, uh, excitement and what have you and uh, and then we have also a psychological level of um, scientific medical discourse of homosexual of, uh, of sexuality also um, we talk about domination or we talk about men looking for their mothers and, and in, in, in women or we talk about men having issues because of their mother with women <laughs> And the same thing with, you know, women, we, they like a certain kind of sexuality, some kind of, certain kind of man because they have issues when they were So we handle sexually, uh, sexuality with all our medical sciences. But when it comes to homosexuality, it's like hands off. And the only ones that uh, have been able to put their hands on it are those who have invented something very structured, very detached, very, uh, we have attempted to give it scientific explanation to those things. For example, um, you were born gay and, and so we went to 
explain it by nature, look at animals do it, and da 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 But, you know, it's almost like we're really trying hard to solidify an understanding, but we never do, or we can't. And then, of course, there is the, the religious and um, moral kind of, um, which um, it has, it's also, it's acceptance side. It has sort of the, the, the free, open love, the liberal love of the 60s, you know, let people be and, um, you know, they're not doing anything to you. Why don't you just, uh, you know, and, and oh, those also are, don't really make it all the way and there's a lot of hypocrisy because a lot of guys say yeah i have gay friends and what have you but really but i you know don't don't come to me with it you know <laughs> and so there's it's all very it's very fascinating it's really fascinating because there are these um this lack of uh of of, uh, of understanding basically and 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 but a real determination to peg it down with opinions and beliefs. Uh, and for this, I find it fascinating. And then, of course, from this point, I could uh, expand on a whole bunch of different routes, but I don't want to do that now. I just kind of want to open it, maybe introduce myself this way to Sana, and, um, and, and just ponder, have us ponder a little bit on how perhaps extremely uh i mean would it be could it be inappropriate could it be inappropriate could it be that we're avoiding something by making it so much about morality religion ethics um you know god punishing you or disgust and irresponsibility in society or what have you or or can you know perversity and all these these are all ideology concepts uh, whether we're talking about a comprehensive scripture religion or we're talking about just emotionality you know i'm offended by it but we're we only we only make it about that and and, and it behooves us to to understand why do we do that with something that is physical it's about one of the things that the the human sexuality can do <laughs> you know uh, some people are really sort of needing of, 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 of feeling it, attracted to it. Uh, it feels uh, like they need to pursue it, like it's very attractive to them. And other people uh, don't. They have a, a natural aversion, apprehension. Um, there's disgust and there's um, fear and there's... You know, people have tried it. Men have been bisexual, but they really don't think it's the cat's meow. They kind of really, uh, they have an appreciation for women that is greater sexually. And so you have uh, the, the full gamut as far as how people feel about it, but everybody can experience its feelings. I mean, even a, a guy that really didn't, you know, felt disgusted or or does not have any sort of psychological satisfaction from it. You know, let's say he ended up doing it after a party somewhere, and he can have, during that experience, the feelings that arise between two men and in intimacy, love, passion, and desire that two gay guys, fully gay guys, experience one night. As far as the chemistry and the biology, the attraction, the pleasure, the ecstasy, and the, the want to orgasm and everything, all of that is perfectly capable by anybody. Now, it is not driven equally by everybody. It's driven differently, and this is where it becomes interesting, and this is where we could go any, any number of uh, paths to start talking about it. But without doing that, I just perhaps just want to look at that you know i just feel that we need to understand we are avoiding are we avoiding something are we lying a lot being angry um making th saying things that don't make sense because when you look at when you listen to, for example to um to some of the civil rights uh, discourses about marriage and raising children and as, as a gay couple you sometimes you, you if you listen carefully to the logic so things are shockingly 
unsensical, insense. They don't make sense. That would that doesn't make sense. You're like forging it. You're trying to. Where did you get that from? Where did you, where did you ever read that? You just you just want to complete the story so that it makes sense. And I could say the same thing to people who are against it from a religious kind of moral. Uh, see, you know, they say things also that um, don't really uh, don't really uh, are not compatible with with what religion itself says in some instances. And also don't make sense a lot of the times in the, in, the, in the pure logical sense. And it is because we're forging um, uh, a, 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 um, sort of a conceptual, ideological, moral way of feeling or having opinions about it. And we're not looking at it simply as a, a, a function of the, something that the body does biologically. Uh, mechanically, uh, as part of human sexuality, we have a real, real. Um... Now, there's a reason for that. <laughs> I don't want to say it seems like why shouldn't we? It seems it would be easy. There's a reason why we are moved to have strong emotions, opinions, and thoughts, whether they're religious or moral or secular, and still emotionally. Um, high you know opinionated or high strong there's a reason there's something that happens that is particular to homosexuality that is not a uh, characteristic of sexuality itself but particular to homosexuality that creates instant instability and i'm not going to talk about that now but i want to get the ball rolling at this level and see where it goes from here okay bye bye